Hello, this is James Bradley, known as JB East because my initials are JB and I'm way out in the East, out here in New Zealand. And we're speaking to my partner, JB West, Jeff Brown. How are you doing way out there in Normandy in France? <laughs> Very well, James. Thank you, and uh, it's wonderful for uh, it's wonderful for us to um, to help um, peel the onion of the big lie propaganda machine and help people understand what's going on around the world. So, um, uh, gl glad to, glad we're back together again. Yeah, the, as listeners will know, our last portion was on uh, propaganda. And after that recording, Jeff and I were talking about censorship as a subset of propaganda, something different. Censorship is not telling the uh, uh, whole truth, leaving things out. It's it's not just saying something actively. And you know, when we when people think of censorship, they think of that censor, that evil man or woman with the green eye shade and the black pen in the dark room. But not all censors are, are evil. Um, uh, the great Norm Chomsky did a book and a film called Manufacturing Consent. And he said that these people on TV and radio and uh, in our newspapers, they're not, you know, the, it, it isn't like they uh, uh, see the truth, believe the truth, and then they they have a stomach wrenching time to censor and not tell the truth. No, he said these people are often groomed and get in their position because they agree with the uh, narrative um, anyway. They agree with the mainstream narrative, so they're happy to leave inconvenient facts on the floor. And it can be natural how things are censored. I'd like to tell a, a story from um, my past. Um, a few years ago, I was in Vietnam researching for a book on Vietnam. And I was talking to what people would consider would be Viet Cong, um, farm kids who fought for the Vietnamese side. They took up arms to defend their backyards and rivers and streams and villages. And now these Viet Cong fighters who were 15, 16, 17 years old back then during the war are now in their 70s, basically. And one day I was in the living room of a kindly lady in the middle of Vietnam. Let's say she was 70 to 75. And when I came to interview her about the war, she had obviously you know, tidied up the living room and uh, on the table between us, she put a spread of local fruits and crackers and jellies and juices and tea. And she, you know, it was like the purpose of me coming was to eat. So I politely had some tea and one biscuit and and but I took out my computer and wanted to get going uh, to interview her and. I found out that she was a fighter defending her home. She talked in kindly language, not about as someone who hated Americans, but she said, she said, James, she said, Americans came to my front porch. They threatened my family home. If someone comes and threatens your home, you have to rise up. Everyone has to defend their own home. So a gun was put in my hand in the, in the, uh, during the interview, I learned that th she had bullets still lodged in her spine from a Marine who shot her in her last engagement. And I asked her if her, the bullets hurt. And she said, from time to time, you know, as the seasons change, and especially when it's raining. At that point, the raindrops were making noise on the tin roof. And I looked at this kindly lady offering me oranges. Mr. Bradley, you didn't eat this orange. And then I'd ask her another question. Mr. Bradley, the, the, these bananas are local. Why don't you have one? She was just so concerned about, you know, my poor stomach and whether I'd have enough food. And I thought, my mother would love this woman. And then suddenly I, I got dizzy. I, the room really moved. 
as I went back to a time when I was with my kindly mother back in Antigo, Wisconsin, 1968, 1969. I was about 14 years old, and I was packing a care package for my brother Steve, who was a United States Marine in this very area of Vietnam that I would later interview these people. So I remember packing this care package. You know, things had to be wrapped in plastic and so that if they were searched, they could easily be seen. And she made the banana bread a certain size so it would fit in just this way. And Steve's favorite uh, little goodies. And, you know, my mother loved my brother. I loved my brother. We were sending a care package off to my brother, the Marine. Suddenly, um, now, years later, I'm in front of this kindly woman with bullets in her spine, thinking, I'm wondering if my brother put those bullets in her spine. My mother was supporting the killing and shooting of nice women. Like, I mean, how 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 could this be possible? And I, I just it I don't know what what the word is for it, but the 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 room was spinning and uh, kind of out of control for a, a few moments as I dealt with this. So my point there, obviously, is that very, very n nice people can support things that uh, they don't really know what the bottom line is about. So now I'd like to switch to nice people in America who inadvertently support neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Now, folks, the, the, don't ask us to take sides. War is wrong. Jeff and I don't like war. No, we don't agree with Putin um, uh, going into Ukraine. We don't agree with uh, tanks solving problems, but uh, this is what's happening. And there's two sides to the situation. And while we're hearing an awful lot about Putin and Russia, we're not hearing about the side to which we are spending a tremendous amount of money on. Now, by now, everyone has heard the term Ukrainian neo-Nazis. Putin announced that he was going into this special military operation. One of his goals was to clean out the neo-Nazis. And stories have been bandied about in the international press denying that there are these Nazis in the Ukrainian government. Uh, one article in the beginning said, how could there be Nazis? Zelensky is a Jew. Zelensky's being presented as a Democrat fighting for freedom worth us giving billions and billions of dollars. But there's two sides, and one side is being censored out. Recently, Jeff Brown sent me a video of a Sky News interview of a Russian parliamentarian. So Sky News in London is interviewing this uh, a Russian parliament member. And when this Russian parliament member held up a picture of Prime Minister Zelensky standing next to a soldier with Nazi swastikas. Oh, my God, the Sky News hole. Well, we'll see you later. He immediately cut the interview short. Now, this was a, I sent this uh, interview to various correspondents in the United States and to various friends and, you know, who, who I've known for a while. And a number of these people are liberal hipsters, you know, Bob Marley music and let's get along and peace and and uh, let's have a talk and listen to some music. But to my shock, a number of my friends and acquaintances, some of them professional professionals in the media, immediately labeled this Russian propaganda. And, you know, I had a number of exchanges with these people on WhatsApp in which I said that just a minute, how can this be propaganda? It's it's just a, look, you can see in the, in the news account, there is a Russian, he's on the screen, he's being interviewed, everything is okay until he holds up a picture. The picture has Nazi swastikas in it, standing right next to Prime Minister Zelensky, and they cut the interview short. It's obvious what's going on, but no, no, no. People in America that I was dealing with did not want to see what was in front of them. So I dug more deeply into this question 
of Ukrainian neo-Nazis? Are there really neo-Nazis in Ukraine who have a lot of influence? And I contacted my friend Jeremy Kuzmarov, editor of Covert Action magazine, which I highly recommend. Go on the internet, covertactionmagazine.com, and it is fabulous. And Jeremy is a former professor, and he's steeped in European history, and he's written a book about Russia. And I asked him about the Ukrainian neo-Nazis, and he, oh, James, there's plenty of information. And he gives me the name of, of three books and a number of articles, and he sends me stuff. It's like, you know, James, where have you been living, under a rock? And Jeremy recommended a book that I delved into by Christopher Simpson called Blowback. The first full account of America's recruitment of Nazis and its disastrous effect on the Cold War, our domestic policy, and foreign policy. Folks, the book is by Christopher Simpson, and it's called Blowback. You can see it on the internet. You can uh, see interviews of Christopher Simpson on YouTube. It's really worth spending an hour listening to him. This book blew my mind. It tells the story of how these neo-Nazis, this is not some club just formed recently that Putin is talking about. <clears throat> it tells The book tells the history of how the CIA in Europe was built upon the former Nazi intelligence network. There was a guy named Richard Galen who ran Nazi intelligence in World War II. When he was running Nazi intelligence, he ran the uh, the Ukrainians who agreed with the Nazis. These were became called Ukrainian neo-Nazis. So when Germany took uh, took over these huge areas, they had they needed help. Not every German could be the mayor, or the local chief police. So they had to rely on others. And these Ukrainian neo-Nazis raised their hand and jumped up. Sure, I'll be mayor of the town and and take those Jews out into the forest and shoot them. Sure, I'll be the chief of police who will round up these undesirables that the Germans don't like and make them lie down in a gully and machine gun them. Sure, I'm a Ukrainian um, Nazi ready to do your dirty work. Now, after the war, the OSS, which became the CIA, the story is very complicated. I'm just telling you the top uh, line. The OSS and CIA, uh, they built their European network upon Reinhard Galen. Just get this, folks. The head of Nazi intelligence, a true war documented war criminal, the OSS CIA said, hey, this guy's great. He knows all about Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union, unlike us Americans. So we'll just dust them off. We won't prosecute them. Just like Werner von Braun with the rocket program in Germany that later he worked for NASA, we used Richard Galen as the chief of intelligence in Germany. So get this, folks. Richard Galen is a true war criminal. Stalin from Moscow is looking at this war criminal. And uh, America is looking at the chief of intelligence to help him out. Well, Galen had used these Ukrainian neo-Nazis during the war, and so the U United States CIA used these Ukrainian neo-Nazis after the war to create chaos against the Soviet Union. Now, it's a long story, but the point is the neo-Nazis who the United States empowered in 2014 in, the, in Obama's Ukrainian color revolution. Everyone remember that? It's been washed out of American television. You know, I've seen debates about uh, why Ukraine is a, you know, why there's fighting in Ukraine, and neither side can say, well, you know, let's take a look at the 2014 revolution that Obama instigated and Biden supported, where we, uh, we uh, got rid of the democratically uh, elected government and we installed neo-Nazis. No, 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 no. That's not allowed in the m American media. And I, I kind of assume that was the beginning of the uh, Ukrainian neo-Nazis who are behind Prime Minister Zelensky today. But hey, 
these neo-Nazis who the America who the United States is currently giving financial support are lineal descendants of the neo-Nazis with whom the relation with whom the United States has had a relationship since 1945. Think of your local Elks Club or your local Veterans of Foreign Wars Club. Maybe the founder back in 1945 of your local VFW is not alive, but his son or his grandson is, is, is a member. There's pictures of grandpa up on the VFW wall. It's like that. These neo-Nazis have proudly inherited over the generations uniforms and stories and, and armaments, and they have inherited a relationship with the United States. Now, the significance of what I'm talking about is not just these facts, but the significance is that the Ukraine right now is the number one foreign story in the United States today. Hey, the House of Representatives and the Senate had to rush, 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 hurry, overnight, overnight, $40 billion for Ukraine, emergency spending. We got to get this done. Folks, luckily, Rand Paul has slowed the bill down a bit, but let, let's ask some questions here. Hey, this amount, this $40 billion, this almost equals the entire Russian military budget for the whole year. This $40 billion is equivalent to 10 times the Ukrainian total defense budget. What's going on here? In the last six months, the United States has, has had to rush, rush, rush for freedom and democracy money over to Ukraine. We're, we just gave Ukraine more money than America spends on all its roads and bridges in one year, folks. We're in a huge country. Think of all those roads and bridges and all that money. Well, we just went pop. Let's give that amount to Ukraine. No problem. So here's that's the mind-blowing aspect. Ukraine is the number one foreign story in the American news. But walk around to your friends and ask them about the 80-year history of connectivity between the neo-Nazis behind Zelensky right now and, uh, and America. Ask your American friends about how we've been, fr you know, your friends could talk about how we've been allies with Japan since 1945, how we've allied with Germany, the UK. They all know that. Well, if Ukraine's the number one story, how come people are not, uh, 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 you know, how come they don't know this this story since 1945? So back to my correspondent friends and my acquaintances in the United States that uh, don't want to face the facts. You know, th this 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 what we've been talking about right now has been censored out. Just like my mother packing that care package for my brother, she didn't know the full story. Just like Americans who now are blindly supporting Ukraine. And yeah, there's two sides to the story. We're not defending Putin, but there is another side to this story. And there's a deep neo-Nazi connection. And America now, just as it has for decades, has been supporting some pretty rough, bad characters. And America should know who we are supporting before we spend a dime. So that's a little of the background on the neo-Nazis in Ukraine. But what is really startling now, what is really dirty and almost hard to face, is the true information that's coming out about the American bio labs that we inserted into Ukraine. And the guy to talk about this is Jeff J. Brown, Jeff, take us into Ukraine and these biolabs. Well, James, thank you. And that, that was a wonderful um, anecdotal and, and um, uh, experiential um, presentation. Like you and the Nazis, uh, where tens of thousands of Nazis were shipped out of, of, of of uh, Nazi Germany and sent all over Western Europe, North America, South America, et cetera, after World War II. 
we need to go back to 1945 when the uh, Japanese, 1949, I'm sorry, when the Japanese were uh, defeated in um, uh, in uh, uh, in in China, and the Americans liked what they saw, just like the Americans loved the Nazis in uh, Eastern Europe. Well, in 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 in, in Nazi Germany, America loved Japan's bioweapons program that it developed. Uh, in China from 1935 to 19, I'm sorry, 1945, I'm sorry, when they were defeated, excuse me. And so for 10 years, the Japanese basically became the, the from 1935 to 1945, they became the leading bioweapons, weapons of mass destruction uh, developers <clears throat> on the planet. America loved what they saw, and they immediately, just like they took uh, Reinhard um, Galen, they took they took the the, the top level uh, uh, Japanese to the United States with 8,000 slides and you know containers full of documentation about the hundreds of thousands of people that the Japanese had exterminated in China with bioweapons. And they were sent to Fort Detrick in Maryland, and immediately Fort Detrick became the most important WMD bioweapons center for all of the world, and it has never stopped. Uh, in 197, we can go. We can go. You and I have covered this. There was there were bioweapons in Korea um, during the Korean War that uh, were exactly like what the Japanese were using in China uh, uh, previously. And uh, it just it has not stopped. If anybody tells you, well, the United States signed the bioweapons um, convention in 1975, just like Douglas Valentine said when I interviewed him about his book, you know, the CIA is organized crime. They don't stop. They just change the name and move the, 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 the name plaque from one office to the, to the next. So they, that way they cannot they can say they have not lied to to uh, the Senate or the House of Representatives or a judge uh, because they just keep on doing it under a different name and they move 10 meters down the, down, down the hall. This has continued to go on. What's so shocking about the what's ha happened in Ukraine is that it, it Russia is exposing some of the vilest, most repugnant, most revolting, uh, war crimes uh, in our in, in our day, and it as as bioweapons and the Nazis, uh, you know, were brought up into the twenty uh, first century uh, when Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton were in the U.S. Senate after in, from two thousand five to two thousand eight, along with Joseph Biden. So we had we had Joseph Biden. We had Hillary Clinton. We had we had Obama, uh, Barack Obama in the U.S. Senate from 2005 to 2008, and they tasked themselves to develop bioweapon laboratories in Ukraine. This is um, um, uh, all been laid out by the Russians. Documents, stamps, signed, uh, you know, signatures. Uh, this this is this this is for real. Uh, Obama was the one who pushed in the Senate to finance with taxpayer money these 31 uh, WMD bioweapon labs in Ukraine. Hillary Clinton, also in the Senate, was the one who pushed through uh, the uh, concept that these labs would be, quote, dual purpose, uh, uh, end, uh, end of quote. And, of course, what that means is, is that, well, we're going to try to, you know, uh, find ways to uh, protect ourselves from bioweapons, but we're also going to make them too. This was, of course, in, in complete contravention with the bioweapon convention that the United States signed in 1975, but there is not a treaty that the United States respects uh, unless it is completely within its um, 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 uh, 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 interests. Then Biden, who was also in the Senate, he was tasked to be the bag man. 
He was the he's he was the money man. And as James has pointed out, the um, Ukraine for the Democratic Party and the Russians are showing this with documentation. The Ukraine has become a gigantic money laundering center for the Democratic Party, Hunter Biden, et cetera. So the the Dem, unfortunate and, and I'm a registered Democrat in Oklahoma. I voted Democrat all my life, and so I'm shocked and 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 disgusted by what I'm telling you all. But hey, sometimes we have to take a look, you know, at, at, you know, in the mirror, and um, and it's not pretty. And so uh, the Democratic Party has been using since 2005 Ukraine as a bioweapons. Uh, WMD development uh, center uh, for monetary profit. And how they did that is, of course, they used the Department of State, the Department of Defense, the CDC, uh, the Central Intelligence Agency. And this money, U.S. taxpayer money that the Democratic Party pushed through the Congress and the House went to uh, people like, and uh, there's also George Soros, uh, who has also invested heavily in bioweapon labs in the Ukraine. Uh, there's also the Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, there is the Clinton Foundation. There is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. There's Hunter Biden's Rosemont Seneca. Uh, there is uh, the uh, Rockefeller's Investment Fund. Um, I'm sorry, the Open Society, George Soros's Open Society Foundation and his investment fund, CRDF, uh, Echo Health Alliance. I mean, it just, it just goes on and on and on. So these people were given all of this money and they, from, from the U.S. taxpayers, it was then used in all these labs in Ukraine, bioweapon labs to make, bio, to make crimes against humanity. As, and who else was involved? Well, big pharma, of course. And so not only not only were all of these labs operated by and paid by and run by the U.S. Department of Defense, but who else was there? Eli Lilly, Moderna of uh, vaccine fame, uh, Pfizer of vaccine fame, Merck, um, uh, Pharmaceuticals, which has been a part of the CIA since the 1950s, Gilead, which is a uh, a, com a, uh, a company that's highly, highly associated with the CIA and um, uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the the vaccine set, and then the U.S. Embassy in Kiev, Pentagon contractors like Black and Veatch. Hunter Biden invested in Metabiota and Skymont Medical and, and many others. So then what would happen is, is they, they got all this money. They, 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 all the, the Lilly and Pfizer and Merck and Moderna, et cetera. They developed the bioweapons with Black and Veatch and Metabiota, et cetera. The Pentagon contractors they got paid and then they gave they gave kickbacks to the Democratic Party for their campaign, their their reelection campaigns and election campaigns. So if 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 um, if, um, you know, when you think about, you know, the um, uh, uh, Reagan and the um, uh, even going back to Watergate, I mean, Watergate is like a frickin parking ticket compared to what's been going on in Ukraine since 2005. And even if you want to go back to Ronald Reagan and the Iran gate with the Contras and missiles being sold uh, illegally to Iran on the October surprise and all that, that's like a speeding ticket compared to what this is. I mean, this is, this is the most crass, craven, disgusting, corruption on a scale that we cannot even uh, imagine. And it's also war crimes. So this is why the U.S. the U.S. is absolutely ballistic about Ukraine right now. And as James said, told me, you know, Mitch McConnell said, you know, the Pentagon, the Ukraine is the most important th issue in the world right now. Well, of course it is, because the Russians have got 
concrete proof of what I just explained to you. And as shocking as it may sound, the Russians have already announced that I'm not talking about I'm not talking about uh, social media. I'm talking about representatives of the federal government of Russia. I'm talking about representatives of the legislature in Russia are already saying that they are going to have war crime, Nuremberg style war crime trials to expose all of this to the entire world. So you can imagine what Obama and Clinton and Biden and Soros and Gates and um, uh, you know Hunter Biden and the, the Rockefeller Foundation and all these other people, Pfizer, Moderna, if Russia conducts a, a war crime trial and they say they are going to do it, this is going to expose one of the vilest um, uh, histories uh, uh, in the West uh, going back uh, to World War II because of all of the Nazi connections. I just want to also point out that, I mean, that's, that, that's the most salient thing uh, that we have learned. The other, the other thing that we have learned is, is that uh, Germany has been involved. They are up to their, they are up to their necks in, in uh, working with the United States in these WMD bioweapon labs in Ukraine, as has Poland. And there they have actually proof of showing 3,500 blood samples of Ukrainian citizens were sent back to Germany, uh, which reminds me of the hundreds of thousands of DNA samples that Harvard University took out of Chinese citizens in the 1990s from their lungs and their and their sinuses uh, to, uh, to for the buildup to uh, create uh, the first SARS in 2003. So th this this is this has got the Western establishment absolutely apoplectic, panicked, and that's why they are trying to destroy Russia and win in the Ukraine so that this cannot go out. I would like to point out. These are just some, these these are just some of the salient evidence that the, the Russians are finding. Uh, a a veterinary lab in Mariupol, uh, supposedly veterinary lab uh, that uh, involved the United States. Uh, they found uh, samples of typhoid fever, gas gangrene, cholera, diphtheria, pneumonia. Tularemia, anthrax, and several species of human dysentery. Now I ask you, what do anthrax and diphtheria have to, and typhoid fever have to do with dogs and cats? So what they what they were doing is is that the Germans and the Poles and the, the Americans they were covering up, and, and the Germans supposedly were studying foxes in in the Ukraine uh, for the transmission of. But what they were doing is, is they were using that as a front while you while doing their dirty work with WMD weapons uh, behind the scenes. That behind the scenes has now become front and center because Russia is now exposing it to the entire world. Uh, there's some other really, really just, I mean, it's just like, it's like a bad, you know, Monty Python movie, just, you know, with Vincent Price, you know, as the monster. I mean, they actually um, have evidence showing that the United States bioweapon labs took highly uh, weaponized forms of tuberculosis that they undoubtedly uh, weaponized in these labs, put it on play money. Now get a load of this. Put it on play money. You know, we were all when we were all kids. You know, we we all we, we, you know, had our play dollars and play money. They put these highly infectious um, tuberculosis uh, bacteria on play money and distributed it to children in the Donbass. And the Donbass actually had an outbreak of highly infectious tuberculosis. In in 2020, and that they now have the proof of where it came from. It came from the United States WMD bioweapon labs, who 
uh, administer the tuberculosis to uh, 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 the citizens of eastern Ukraine who are all Russia, R- R- Russophone, Russophones, Rus- Russian, Russian speakers. It goes on and on and on. They, um, the Ukraine asked uh, the um, uh, Ukraine, and they, uh, the letters and everything are all here. Uh, the, the, they asked for under the um, uh, under under the aegis of human of of um, international charity organizations. The Ukrainians were asking for uh, atropine. Uh, hundreds of thousands of atropine, and in fact, the United States already sent 220,000 doses of atropine to Ukraine in the first months of 2022. Uh, right now, why? Because atropine is what is injected in people who have been infected, who have been hit with chemical warfare. The Russians have been saying for the last two months. Ukraine is stage is is trying to stage a false flag using chemical weapons and or nuclear weapons to blame the Russians for the 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 the, the false flag attack. <clears throat> In the same letter, the um, the Ukrainians asked the Europeans for one point uh, enough potassium iodide for 1.7 million people for seven days. Well, what is potassium iodide used for? Well, that's what you take when you've been exposed to radiation, nuclear radiation, to keep to, 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 uh, to, um, to protect your thyroid gland and not get thyroid cancer. They were, they've been, they're, they're asking for thousands and thousands of, of uh, chemical hazmat suits, chemical, ma- uh, chemical um, uh, uh, warfare masks, gloves, uh, et cetera. And this is going back in, in, in the month of March. So, and this was all supposed to be under the aegis of international charity organizations. I mean, if that doesn't make you throw up, um, it makes me throw up. And it's just, it's just, it's just beyond the pale. So get ready for war crime trials. Uh, the Russians are have are officially on board for conducting them. They supposedly already have two NATO generals that they have caught in Mariupol at the um, Azov Azovstal steel mill. Uh, one a Canadian, one an American. Three-star generals. The Canadian general is is apparently uh, was one was the one who was conducting the bioweapon research. Uh, and um, at, at uh, uh, in Mariupol, uh, they have supposedly also caught 20 uh, French special forces in Mariupol, and all of these people and the and the neo Nazis and the leadership of the neo Nazis, getting back to James's uh, uh, angle, are going to be taken to Moscow, and they are going to conduct Nuremberg style trials. Uh, just like the Americans did on the Nazis back in um, in 1946. So this is just you know what what you know. How do you want to close out on this, James? It's just it's just beyond. This is it, this is it's it's almost like shell shock to even think think about all this. But what do you what would you like? How would you like to close out? Well, uh, you know, some listeners I know from experience in trying to get this information into America might say, yeah, but Jeff, you know, how about that Putin? He started everything and, you know, ev- that might be all correct. We're, we're not uh, trying to defend anybody here. What we're saying is that censorship is leaving out the information that Jeff is talking about. Russophobia has been marinated into Americans over the past uh, few years, and it doesn't allow them to see what Jeff is talking about. Folks, what has Jeff just been talking about? He said that uh, Senator Barack Obama was supporting this as a senator back in 2005. Well, I'm 68 right now. Let's go back to 2005. Wow, I was just 50 years old. I only had two of my four books under my belt. (laughs) Think of where you were in 2005. You know, I had two little kids that are now adults. 
And I was traveling the country speaking. I was writing books. I was dealing with editors. I wasn't living under a rock. And I didn't know anything about this. No one told me in 2005 that this young uh, senator being groomed for the presidency, um, you know, was was figuring out how to uh, kill with uh, bioweapons. You know, we had a huge campaign, hope and change, millions of people, not millions, but thousands of people in Lincoln Park. You know, wow, we're coming to a peaceful time. We didn't see this newly elected president as a bioweapons criminal. How come we didn't know about this stuff? Well, the point is, Jeff knows about it right now, and this is not propaganda. He's, Jeff is reading from uh, facts, facts that are that Americans can't see. The documents that Jeff has in his hands, Americans cannot get without a VPN and going you know, deeply into the internet like Jeff has, because the United States government has censored all this. Americans can't even get the information, folks. Come on, we have to wake up. The Russians know this. The Chinese know this. The world is going to know this. Imagine if you're in Arizona and you wake up one day and wow, there's bio labs on the Mexican border and they have been taking samples of people who look just like you, of people who look just like your children. What are those Chinese bio labs doing on the Mexican border taking the DNA from you in Arizona? You're up in Vermont and the Russians are there on the on the border. And and we revealed that since 2005, since 2005, famous Russians have been supporting bioweaponry against people in Vermont. Folks, this is going to be known. Look at, face some tough facts. Fact, Senator Barack Obama went to Ukraine and looked at the quality of Ukraine's anthrax. There's a picture of him in a, uh, with a microscope. And Senator Obama didn't blow the whistle and say this is a moral crime. No, Senator Obama was so enamored of this anthrax and Ukraine's ability to help America kill their enemies with bioweapons, that he went back to the United States and authorized money for biolabs in the Ukraine. Well, Bill and Hillary Clinton were big supporters of the Ukrainian Nazis because they could profit from the baby factories, the human trafficking, and they could wash tons of money through Ukraine. As Jeff said, Ukraine has become a democratic money washing machine. Folks, when President when, when Barack Obama was president, his scientists in the Ukraine, supported by Obama money, developed leukemia, as Jeff said. And then his scientists thought, why don't we put leukemia on the currency? Because people handle currency. That's an efficient way to get it innocently out. And then President Obama scientists researched the best delivery system for this currency poison. And as Jeff said, it turns out to be that giving pa pa uh, paper currency to children is the best way to kill a population because the children put it in their mouth before the adults get it. And everybody is infected with President Obama's leukemia embedded currency. And of course, this was all fine and dandy with Joe Biden because he could have Hunter skim off the cream. We have to move from the Russia, Russia fictional period to face some hard facts about America in Ukraine and around the world. You know, my mother and I packing that box for my uh, brother, we were under the idea that Ho Chi Minh was a Hitler. And the whole world was going to fall apart if South Vietnam, if my brother wasn't in South Vietnam uh, shooting 16-year-old uh, girls who were picked up a rifle to, to defend their porches. Well, folks, America got pushed out of Vietnam and Vietnam got united. And I invite you to go to Vietnam where I've spent seven years, a very peaceful country that uh, China didn't take it over. 
There were no dominoes. That was all baloney. Censorship and propaganda helped kill three million Asians. My brother got a bullet right next to his heart. He survived, but we don't have to go through this anymore if we wake up. Today, America is being blinded by Russophobia and censorship is not waking us up to the facts, the facts, the documented facts that Jeff J. Brown has just told us all. So we got to get, you know, rid of this idea that there's a Hitler that we have to save and we have to blindly shovel money. Let's take a look at what we're doing so that history doesn't call us out. And I would just like to just add as a refrain that, you know, everybody wants to say, I was, uh, my, my wife was just talking uh, two nights ago with our aunt in Paris and she, oh, well, that can't be true. It's, it's Russian. That can't be true. It's it's not in it's not in Le Figaro. It's not in uh, it's not not in um, it's not in Le Monde. So it can't be true. Well, I tell you what, the Western the, the West only represents 15 percent of the world population. Um, about six and a half billion of the I mean of about one billion uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, almost eight billion people uh, on Earth. And uh, I think the, uh, the the rest the rest of the world uh, needs we, we need to hear their hear their point of view. And when you look at the evidence, and I'm going to put this in a PDF file, and I'm also going to put the Bioweapon Truth Commission um, on in, in, in the PDF file, so you can go see this. This is this goes back to World War One with chemical weapons, the French and the British. Uh, and uh, we're using uh, bi- uh, chemical weapons in World War One, and it has not stopped since then with bioweapons uh, thereafter uh, with the Japanese in China. So um, I think you, you just you, and you know as 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 James was saying to me, you know, you know Russians cry too, they bleed too, they're people too, they have feelings, they have they have desires, they have dreams, just like you and me. And um, if you look at what I'm showing you in terms of evidence and and you need to be able to sit there and say, well, you know, even it may be from Russia, but it sure looks it's, it's obviously true. So we have we have to get over this idea. We've been brainwashed by the big lie propaganda machine in the West that everything outside of the West is 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 a lie and propaganda and can't be trusted, whereas as James and I are kind of pointing out, it's actually the exact opposite. <laughs> so anyway, thank so you, James. James. This has just Bradley. been wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm James Bradley, better known as JB East. I'm out in the East here in New Zealand. The sun is coming up and the beach is looking good. So JB East wants to thank JB West for all that information. And I'm going to sign off and run to the beach. <laughs> and I'm going to get ready for bed. <laughs> okay. All right, thank James. You. Thank you. Thank you, JB West.